Hello guys! Welcome to our first Sips and Strategies uh, virtual little photographer coffee chat. Uh, let me know if you're tuning in live and you can hear me because this is our first time doing this. It's a little new and uh, I want to make sure we're working out the kinks and that you guys can hear me all good. I'm just pulling up my chat here so that I make sure I can see you as well. And we'll get started here in just a sec. Uh, in the meantime, let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. I'm here in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada, even though today it's actually a little, uh, a little stormy out, which I love. I will take all of the rainy weather before the summer season hits. Um, let me see. Just pulling up my chat. Alex, Jace, hey guys, <laughs> good to see ya. Mm -mm. Oh, perfect, I can pop out the chat. Awesome, awesome. So we'll get started here in just a sec. Uh, I do have pre-submitted questions uh, shared from those of you on my email list, so we will cover those, but there will also be a chance to ask questions live if you're hanging out live in the chat. Hey Hannah, from Nebraska, good to see you girl. Happy to have you here. Uh, so before we dig in just a little bit about this brand new series, uh, I thought it would be fun to just come and have a casual chat like we were going to coffee, hanging out friend to friend, and just asking any advice that you have around like how to grow your business. So this could be anything from mindset to sales, to marketing, uh, to client experience, anything in that full business experience that you have questions around is on the table to dig into. Uh, and this is just kind of a, a casual way of us hanging out and chatting about the real stuff when it comes to business. Uh, so if there's anything on your mind, you'll have a chance to drop it in the chat. Uh, Marley from Vancouver, Sean up in the house, Canada, yeah. Uh, Cooley from Indiana, so good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so some of you <laughs> might know from my, I got my coffee. Let me know if you, if you have your coffee in the chat or maybe tea. Uh, some of you uh, have probably caught my Edit Together Tuesday series and if you, you have, you probably know I love bugs, uh, so. This is like one of my favorites from my girlfriend, Ashley Diana, uh, over at Affirmation Babe, Affirmation Babe podcast. So good. Highly recommend checking it out, but I have a cupboard full of mugs. And when Jace asks, is it too many? I say never. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a little fun little fact about me. Let me know if you love mugs too, but mm -mm -mm. All right, uh, so we will get started here in just a second. Um, as people are trickling in, let me know where you're from. Hey, Christina, good to see you, girl. And uh, yeah, so I, I decided to start this little series because I was missing hanging out with you guys and hanging out with the community. As you know, I do like YouTube videos and stuff, but it's a little bit different when we're able to actually hang out and chat. And I'm able to do that with the students in my courses inside Shoot to Edit, my photography course, and inside Ignite, my business course for photographers, where we do a lot of live coaching in addition to the core curriculum of those programs. But I, I was like, ah, you know, it would be really fun to actually just hang out with our photography community and, and chat and talk about the real stuff. Uh, and lately, uh, a lot of people don't know this, the, we had a little bit of a rocky start to the year, Jason and I. We found out that my puppy, Bella, who's like the love of my life, uh, has cancer. We found out on Valentine's Day of all days. So that's why there's been a little bit of, of a pause on the YouTube channel as far as videos go. I actually had this full lineup that I was ready to create and film and they're still coming, uh, but it started a little bit of a pause just, um, dealing with some personal stuff. And she is doing great now, by the way. Um, it is an aggressive cancer, but we've talked with a lot of specialists and we have her on uh, a treatment for it. And she's doing really amazingly, super back to her energetic self. Uh, and we, we do like mile and a half long walks every day. And she is bouncy playing with toys again and everything. So it's good news, <laughs> uh, but it was a little bit of a challenging month 
uh, just figuring all that out. So I thought it would be fun to like hop on live and, and just connect in this way. Uh, for, <laughs> hey, hey, hey guys. It's so good to see everybody in the chat. Um, but for anybody that is new to my channel or is popping on from somewhere else, I wanted to just share real quick who I am, what I do, and um, why I love doing education. So I'm actually a wedding photographer based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I started my business in 2008 and grew it to six figures within two years. <laughs> that really dates me, right? <laughs> but uh, I've been doing it successfully, hitting that consistent six figures every year since, since then uh, and doing it in a way that I've really sustained it and loved it. Uh, through ups and downs, through different economies, changes in the market, you name it, I've seen it. And uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of though is not even the money aspect of it, but what I was able to create through photography. And when I started, I saw a lot of things in the industry. There were a lot of quote unquote successful photographers, people that I looked up to, like people that were really my heroes when I was just getting started because I was like, oh my gosh, they have it all. That's, that's the business I want. Uh, they just seemed like they were having so much fun and they seemed like they were getting all the amazing clients, all the amazing shoots, like dream shoots, had beautiful work. And I was like, ah, oh, I really like looked up to them and wanted to emulate what they were doing in their business because it was like, that's the goal, that's the dream right there. But then as I started to meet and get to know some of these people through different events, um, one was like at a bridal show that I met, uh, it was very interesting seeing kind of the more of the behind the scenes and a lot of these people were very jaded and it was very sad actually. At that time I was like, why? Like why are they just so cold and so jaded and uh, were just actually miserable behind the scenes of their business? Several of them like had straight up said, the, the money is in doing this, but it's not what I love to do. And others, you know, you could tell that they loved it at one point, but they just kind of got burnt out along the way and became jaded. And so this was something that was really actually critical to my journey. And I'm so happy and thankful now that it was something I experienced early on um, because it allowed me to ask the better questions at a very early stage in my business where I was able to think like, okay, how do I not become like that? <laughs> because those are the people I wanted to emulate at first, but, uh, it allowed me to really start looking at business differently and decide early on I was going to write my own rules and do business in a way that not only could I hit my big financial goals and make really good money and a really good living through the business, uh, but also build it in a way that was sustainable and was joyful and was life-giving and that I could keep doing this thing that I loved for the next three, five, 10 years on into the future is however long I wanted to because I loved photography and I, I didn't want to hate it. I didn't want to hate the people that I got to serve. I, I wanted to continue to enjoy it while also having it fuel my life. Uh, and over the last decade and a half, that's really what I've been blessed by that I get to wake up every day and get paid, get paid <laughs> to work with amazing people, like the best people that trust me, they don't micromanage me, and they pay me really well. And I get to travel the world, uh, do these dream shoots with dream details, with dream clients, and it, it really is like, pinch me guys, such a dream to be able to do what you love and get paid really well for it. Uh, and so if that's not your reality yet, if you're still kind of in that beginning stage, trudging through, trying to figure it out, or even if like you're further along in business, but things have been a bit rocky, 
I want you to know that just because that's not your reality yet, um, doesn't mean anything. Like it's so attainable to everybody here and you a hundred percent deserve that. And so it's really just about going back to the foundations and deciding like what do we want and how can we create it in that way? And so that is some of what we're going to be digging into today. Uh, there's actually some really good questions that were brought up that we're, we're going to be digging deep into and I'll share more on how I was able to cultivate that in my business while growing it really fast. Uh, but let me know in the chat if you, if you agree with this, I find that we all have blind spots and you know, no matter the stage of business we're in, we got to consider that, you know, whether we are just making our first dollar or whether you just hit your first six figure year, there's always more growth. And there's also blind spots that we're just not aware of because we don't know what we don't know for that next stage. Uh, and usually these blind spots come in the form of persistent problems. Problems that are coming up again and again in our business that can sometimes feel like a wall that we hit and we just can't get past. Uh, and so if this is you, drop a Y in the chat and we can dig into this today because I would love to first help you get past that wall, help you see that there is something on the other side and then arm you with the strategies to move forward. And then, cause that's what today is all about. Uh, and also if you're not sure what those blind spots are for you, um, I actually have a free quiz that I made as well that's all about uncovering blind spots based on your stage of business and also your competitive advantage that I find photographers have at every stage. So even if you're brand new, yes, you have a competitive advantage uh, and it's one that even seasoned photographers don't have and then seasoned photographers have a different competitive advantage. So most people don't know their competitive advantage or they just don't use it. Uh, so if you wanna check out that quiz, it's at quiz.chelsinicole.com and uh, I put it together just for our community as like fun, but also like really tactical advice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Darby, need those blind spots gone. <laughs> the thing is with like blind spots, there's always gonna be new ones. So it's okay to have blind spots. Like it's just acknowledging that they're there and, and really like seeking out the help to get past them. And that's what you guys are here for, so. All right, uh, I got some questions uh, from you guys and, and I have also, also some answers. So let's dig in, shall we? Um, if anybody here live has any questions, you can begin to drop them in the chat and I will make sure that we cover them. We also had a handful pre-submitted through email and also uh, the new broadcast channel I made over on Instagram, which if you're not a part of, come join me over on Instagram on our little uh, photo biz besties broadcast channel uh, just for photographer entrepreneurs. It's where I'm gonna be hanging out and um, doing kind of like unhinged biz content uh, just for fun. All right, let's see. Our first question, we got some good questions, guys. Um, and I'm gonna try my best to power our way through all of them. But uh, if you know how I love to teach on coaching sessions, anybody that is a student, uh, I like to go deep. <laughs> so uh, we will power through as many of these as possible. Uh, but if we don't get to your question, keep in mind that we are gonna do future chats as well. And I'll definitely make sure you get the support needed. So first question comes from, uh, actually let's do this one because it's relevant to what we were talking about comes from Hannah. And I think this is a really good question. So Hannah shared, my biggest question and struggle is fighting to keep going when dealing with burnout. I'm struggling to grow and create a marketing strategy that I'm comfortable with, but I'm struggling with burnout, trying to just make it so much so that I want to call it in. Thanks for doing this. Um, so first off, I just wanted to tell Hannah a huge thank you for being so honest and vulnerable and for sharing that with me and with our community, because I know that this is not something that's an easy topic to bring up when we're talking about burnout. Uh, it 
it is a really real struggle and it can be very isolating and hard to bring up because like we want to feel successful. We want to feel confident uh, and it's, it's not a good feeling. And, and honestly, I, I think it's such an important topic because so many people can relate to this and yet a lot of people aren't talking about it. Um, so I'm really glad that we get to have this conversation and there's a lot of advice that I can share around it. Um, so just to kind of reiterate the question, uh, Hannah brought up a few things here. She mentioned that she's struggling with burnout, but also struggling around her marketing strategy. So if Hannah's here in the chat, Hannah, I would love to hear more about what you've tried with your marketing strategy and that wall that you're hitting with it, if you're comfortable sharing. Uh, but yes, like right now you're in burnout, you're in that stage of like, am like, should I just throw in the towel? And, uh, you know, let me know guys in the chat, if, if you can relate to this, if you've ever been to the point where like, you're like, am I cut out for this? Maybe I just don't have that secret sauce, uh, that others have, right? It can feel like that sometimes in business when we're in the struggle, when we're in that grind and things don't seem to be working, then maybe others just have this magic <laughs> that we don't seem to possess. And maybe we're not cut out for entrepreneurship. Uh, so I have some things that I want to share. Uh, obviously, like the way I did it in business was I built my business in a way, as I shared with you guys, where I, I never hit burnout. And it was done very intentionally so that I could keep loving it long term. But I've had a lot of friends that I have experienced this. I've had a lot of students that I've coached through it in my community. And so... I've seen it firsthand and uh, have helped a lot of people through it. And I will share advice on how to prevent it because uh, I think that that's a huge piece of it. If you're not already in burnout, there are ways of preventing it so that it doesn't happen. But Hannah, since you're already in it, the first thing that we need to do is get you out of it. And um, the first thing I would like to kind of look at is like what's the cause or the source of burnout and like those bad feelings that you're experiencing that are making you feel like just giving it all up. Uh, and it sounds like from your question that maybe marketing is part of that. Typically it's gonna be multiple things, but if you can identify where those feelings are coming from, that's really gonna help you know how to move forward in a way that we're not just slapping a Band-Aid on it and saying like, hey, let's just visualize and get you feeling good, but then next week, <laughs> you're back to feeling bad. <laughs> so that's why we need to really get to the cause first so that we can heal that and then move forward. Uh, so some typical causes might be comparison, going on social media and spending a lot of our time there and seeing others at different stages of their business journey and not really seeing what's happening behind the scenes and thinking like, why am I just not as good? Why am I not enough, right? And that's the problem when we're negatively comparing rather than comparing in a way for growth. Uh, so that is sometimes the cause of those feelings. And usually it's the combination of this over time. It's not gonna be just like one time going on social media and comparing and feeling bad. It's like the combination of like over time, this build up of feeling not enough. Uh, another one, that it sounds like is definitely contributing to your burnout is struggling in your marketing, struggling to get the right clients, the right bookings, not really having a system in place that you can rely on to bring in the clients that you want and the bookings that you want and the income that you need to sustain a business because businesses do require money to keep going it, you know it's, it's part of it and it's a huge huge important part of it in order to be doing this for a living you know whether you're doing it part-time or whether you're doing it full-time in order to keep going and have it make sense uh it, the business does need to bring in money uh so one kind of quick fix around the mindset part of it and we will dig into more of business strategy, marketing strategy, and what we can be doing to bring in more profit in our business. But uh, around like the mindset of marketing and what I would 
recommend shifting if, if anybody here that can kind of relate to this, whether, you know, it's an ongoing feeling of like ready to give up or whether it's just like those hints of it that you get from time to time, it's really helpful to change how we think about our marketing. The way I think about marketing is it's just testing. <laughs> marketing is testing. It's like really like a science type thing. And if you haven't cracked the best strategy yet for yourself, that's okay. Uh, in fact, like, I feel like we should always be testing and trying new things and trying new approaches. Uh, one of the fastest ways to get past the testing phase is to get yourself around mentors and others that can guide you and help you skip ahead. But even if you're on your solo journey figuring it out, it's really just approaching it from that, hey, this is just a test allows you to not think like just because you've failed one test that you're a complete failure. Uh, if a scientist fails, they don't say, okay, I'm selling off my Bunsen burners and uh, I'm turning it in. <laughs> no, they, they learn from it. They see that failure as actually just a lesson. Okay, huh, interesting. And then they move on and they test a new hypothesis. Uh, so. It's just a different way of approaching marketing and business that will serve you really well, especially in that growth phase, but even, even for many years to come. And the other thing is, you know, I think that we often build up evidence of not being good enough, whether it's through failed attempts at things or whether it is through comparison. We stack up all these tallies that we're not good enough, we don't have what it takes. And over like a long period of time, if we continue to do that, that's gonna make anyone feel like giving up. <laughs> Can I get an amen? I mean, I, I would feel like giving up if I, if I did that to myself. That is not kind for us to do to ourselves. Uh, so one of the things that I do and I would recommend, and I actually teach this within, for my students as well, uh, and the people I coach and mentor is, to begin regularly tracking and recognizing progress and growth within your business. Because oftentimes growth isn't like this big one thing, like we made it <laughs> overnight. And you know, that's what it looks like on the outside when we're looking at other people's businesses. But typically it's this combination of really small things over a long period of time. And um, if we can start tracking that progress, those small wins, it starts to stack tallies that we do have what it takes, that we are moving forward. Rather than all this evidence against us, we start collecting evidence for ourselves that make us feel good and help us see and recognize that progress. Uh, so I do this on a weekly basis. At the end of each week, I celebrate wins. And you know, maybe it's been a shitty week. You can also find wins in the form of lessons. So going back to that scientist approach to things where, you know, we are taking our failures and learning from them. If, if, if nothing seemed to go right within your week, like how can you look at those failures and find the benefit in them, find what it was meant to teach you? Uh, Cause one of the things that I've discovered just in life in general, it applies to life, it applies to business, uh, all the things uh, is that when you continue to not pay attention to the lessons that are buried within the failures, you will continue to hit the same struggles again and again and again until you discover the lesson there. And it's only when you discover that lesson that you're able to move on and move forward and learn from it. So it's really important to growth. So I like to do that on a weekly basis, look at my wins uh, and celebrate at the end of each week. Um, but another thing that's really helpful and tactical to do in your business, if, if you're in this state of uh, struggle, is to rather than setting like outcome goals, and I think it is important to set goals within your business. So if you're not doing it, it's a very important thing to do, but, and, and to also have like annual monetary goals. Uh, that you're going after because our business needs profit, needs income. However, in addition to 
those outcome goals, which sometimes can feel like ah, wishy-washy, right? Like how do I, how do I actually get there? How do I actually hit that, you know, 50 K year, hit that six figure year, right? And maybe you, you've even set the same goal again and again and again, multiple years in a row. And when you don't hit it over and over again, it's kind of like why even set it? So uh, another approach is to actually do what is called process goals. And so this is our goals that are really clear, black and white, either you did it or you didn't do it type actions. So rather than an outcome where, you know, it's the combination of your actions over a long period of time to hopefully hit that outcome that you're wanting to hit, process goals, you have a lot more control over. And um, they're leading into an outcome goal, but are separate. And so by doing that, you can really start to feel good about your proce process and your, and your progress that you're making towards those things. So that's like another thing that you can do. Um, so yes, uh, just to kind of reiterate, uh, for overcoming burnout, I would start by getting clear on the cause or the source so that you could then heal that. If it's social media, maybe take a pause on social media. Uh, if it is your marketing, maybe it's like actively looking for, okay, where are the gaps in my knowledge or skills? that I can begin learning and put together a learning plan for yourself. That in and of itself will build confidence because there is this thing called like the confidence competence loop where oftentimes we want to feel more confident. We want to feel more sure of ourselves, but we don't have the competency. We don't have the skills in that area. And there are very certain skills that are needed as a business owner beyond just photography like the photography side of it is a huge part of it like we have to have good work that we can then present and deliver to clients but there's this whole other business side of it and all these different skills from interpersonal skills communication skills sales skills uh, knowing how to market ourselves it's a lot of different things that we need to master in order to really grow and scale the business so you can begin by looking at where are those gaps in knowledge and put together a learning plan for yourself so you can begin filling those in, building up that competence so you can then have more confidence. And that would be really the first step is putting together that plan and then blocking out time in the calendar to actually implement. Uh, and that will help elevate you out of this like kind of stuckness so that you can begin moving forward. Uh, and then of course, tracking your progress each week. And then after that, what I would also do and would recommend to everybody here is it's so important to continuously be reconnecting to the bigger vision of what we're creating. And if you haven't done this before, this is your sign, like get in on the calendar, block off a day or a weekend to get really clear on the vision of what you're creating in your business, because this should really be the driving force behind everything you do in your business. Uh, and oftentimes I find when we're kind of in the struggle bus and like not feeling good, it's because we're zoomed in too tight on one aspect of our business and the blinders are up and we're just like in it and it's a grind and it's not good, right? So vision is all about zooming out so we could see that 10,000 foot view of our business and have kind of a, a more clear approach to it. Because when we can zoom out and not be in it and just kind of see it for, you know, what's, what am I actually creating? What, what's the vision of what I'm creating? Why am I doing it? What are my values? And how can I align my actions and build it in a way that, you know, you do have that sustainable growth over time. Uh, it allows you by zooming out to make much better decisions, much more intentionally, and also not be as affected when things go wrong, like little things go wrong, because it's just one tiny piece of the bigger picture of what you're creating. Uh, Hannah's in the chat. My cause of burnout was I took 
any and all jobs trying to figure out the ideal clients I wanted to grow my portfolio. And once I learned what I want for ideal clients, I get ghosted. Ah, okay. Great. I mean, so that's amazing that you know that that, that is the cause. And we can actually talk about ideal clients and about taking on all the jobs. Because uh, this is one of the things that I put into place in my business actually to prevent burnout. Uh, so that actually would be, Hannah, part of your vision would be, how do I work with people that light me up, that fill my cup? People that, you know, when I come away from a session, I feel energized and charged rather than drained. Uh, let me know if like, if that would be something that you would want as part of your vision. That was part of my vision uh, when I saw all these photographers that were just so jaded and burnt out and just not really loving it anymore. And, and by the way, they're no longer in business, these people that I'm talking about, but they had been in dis business like probably for like over a decade at that point. So they were, you know, the successful photographers at that time, um, but they just hadn't built the business in a way that fueled them. Uh, and so that would be part of the vision. And for, for myself, I was like, I only want to work with dream clients. And yes, in the first year of business, <laughs> did I work with a lot of people? Yes. Uh, it's part of like going through it initially and kind of discovering, well, what is it that I want? Uh, one way of getting a little bit clearer on your dream client, if you're, if you're not quite there yet, is to just think about like, who are the favorite, like if I were to like look at the clients that I have worked with, or if you haven't had any clients yet, who would be like, in a circle of people that you know, or friends of friends, like that one person that you're like, ah, if I could have them, they would be a dream client, right? It's just getting a little bit clearer and then a little bit clearer and allowing it to be an evolution. Get to know your dream client over time and I'll tell you, it changes. My dream client from like the beginning is very different from my dream client now. And they have a lot of the same characteristics. They have a bigger budget, but they actually have a lot of the same personality traits and characteristics. They have just shifted over time in, in regards of like where they find me, how we connect, uh, their values, and different things that are really important to, to know when it comes to your dream client. Uh, but what's great about like getting clear on your dream client, and this is really such a big part of business because it interweaves into everything else. In, in the way that like, actually I teach it inside my business program is we cover the pillar topics of business from your branding, when people are first experiencing your brand and how you're really cultivating connection and trust to marketing and getting in front of them in the right places where they will find you to sales uh, and really becoming a partner to people in the way that you sell so that it's serving them and it, it takes away the salesy sleaziness of it. And we will dig into sales. I think there was a question on sales um, to like that client experience and how you can turn them into what I call your PR dream team of raving fans. So it's going above and beyond and wowing and surprising and delighting. But in order to really be successful at each stage of the business journey, we need a dream client compass. We need to really know who that one person is that we're trying to reach and how to speak to them at each stage in the business journey with us you know, through your branding, through your marketing, through your sales, and through that final experience that you're delivering to them so that uh, you're able to like effortlessly magnetize them in. And so another thing that's really important in business is knowing how to diagnose what's going wrong, right? So for Hannah here, she's gotten clear on her dream client. She's begun figuring it out and that that is part of it in the beginning. We take all the, all the jobs, like what kind of photography do I like to do? Like what, what niche do I want to be in, uh, to, to really specialize. And you know, there, there is a figuring out period, but as we get clearer and clearer and clearer, then the question becomes, okay, I know the person, how do I reach them? Uh, and I would say branding is a huge part of this because we want to build a brand 
around that dream client in a way that it really connects with them and meets them where they're at. That is really the key to a successful business system is meeting that client where they're at at each stage and really knowing and getting in their head and being able to speak to them in a way that connects, in a way that builds trust, in a way that they're immediately like, oh my God, I found my photographer. If you're not doing this in your marketing and your branding, and then expecting, you know, when they reach out via email, when you get them on a consultation, that you're gonna be able to land <laughs> that sale, that's often the mistake is sometimes we're focusing so much on like, okay, what am I doing wrong in my emails? What am I doing wrong in my pricing at that sales stage after they've reached out and neglecting the other two stages before that of your branding and your marketing? Really, they should already be ready to sign on the dotted line before they land in your inbox. That is really... Uh, the key to a successful business system. So oftentimes it's not what's happening with your pricing, with your email, with your follow-up process. Yes, that's important because that closes the deal. But oftentimes like why people are ghosting is because we haven't really cultivated that relationship earlier on. And by cultivating a deeper relationship with our people, ghosting goes away. Uh, so <laughs> there is a solution to it and we can chat about that a little bit more. Uh, I had one more thing I want to share uh, around burnout. So definitely get clear on your vision and really be able to visualize that like end outcome of what you're creating, uh, how it spills into your lifestyle, what it does for your family, uh, what it does for the people around you, how you're able to touch the lives of your clients in your business. Like getting really clear on all of the different aspects of what you're creating and why it's important to do it. Uh, because when when things become a struggle in business, when things, you know, you know, cause we're going to have to learn and grow and part of growth is messy. It's not always the beautiful fun stuff. Uh, it's ups and downs, it's a cycle, right? And you know, once we kind of like hit that upswing and get a little bit of confidence, my goal is to always be growing, always be pushing, always stepping back into the uncomfortable and finding a new level. And if that's you too, that means there's gonna be ups and downs. And so really getting clear on that vision is going to help you see through that gap between where you are now and where you wanna be so that you can bridge that gap but not get stuck feeling bad and eventually burning out while you're doing it. Uh, the other thing, and this will be the last thing I'll share on this topic and we'll dig into like another question, is for preventing future burnout, one of the best things we can do is just take back control over, over our lives and our business. And this is like what I shared that I did early on was I set my rules for the game I was playing because at the end of the day, business is just a game. It's like this big fun game that we're playing. It's a big science experiment. And yes, there are foundational rules and principles and strategies to the game, just like any game. Uh, but since this is our game that we're making in our business that we own, there's also room to set our own rules. And what I mean by this is we get to define what we stand for, what we don't stand for, the type of clients that we want to take, who we're going to say no to, and also, you know, what we're not okay with. If you're not okay with sacrificing weekends because that's your time for family, you get to define that for you in your business. That's the beauty of building something that you own. But what happens is a lot of times we start a business and we get excited and <laughs> we're not business people and we don't really think through everything. And so the business starts to run us rather than us running the business because we've not intentionally defined what we're creating. Uh, so this is an exercise for everybody. You know, Go back sometime this week, mark some time on the calendar and set some intentions for your business and really like what your rules for your business game are and what you're creating. And when you do this, you'll end up operating a lot more intentionally. You'll be more confident to say no to that wrong fit client so that you can then allow more room for the right people to flow in. So 
Everybody uh, say thanks to Hannah for a really good conversation around this. I think it's very beneficial to a lot of photographers within our community and it's just such an important conversation to have. So uh, thanks Hannah for, for the question and for like the good conversation. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And if anybody has any other additional questions that this brought up, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll kind of keep the conversation going. In the meantime, I do have another question here related to sales and selling. Uh, and I know that that was another thing we wanted to touch on. Uh, <laughs> Darby, when I made She-Hulk dating app for nine months, I almost lost the fire. <laughs> Darby. Um, all right. So our next question comes from Megan uh, around sales strategy. Uh, the biggest thing I'm struggling with in my business right now is marketing and sales. I feel like I'm doing everything I need, need to in my business, but I don't feel like I'm getting enough leads or clients. I also suck at pitching myself because I don't wanna come off as salesy and I need to work on that. Uh, so great, great question, Megan. There's a few things buried in this. Um, Megan shared her biggest struggle is marketing and sales. So those are two big areas of business. Um, one is more about like the visibility and getting in front of those right people. And then the sales is like really bringing it home. And so we can touch on both of these things. Uh, one thing that I noticed here that Megan shared is I feel like I'm doing everything I need to in my business. And uh, if Megan was here live with me on a coaching call, I would ask everything. <laughs> uh, and guys, I get it. Like we wear so many different hats as entrepreneurs. Uh, let me know in the chat if you agree, if you can relate to that. Like we're juggling a lot of different things when it comes to running a photography business from like the artistry side of it and the delivery side of it. And, really cultivating a great client experience to like all the things to figure out and run the business side of it. So it can feel like we're doing everything. Uh, but oftentimes there are things that we're not thinking of, or maybe like, are we doing it in the right way? Are we doing it in a way that's really connecting, uh, like what we talked about to that dream person? Because sometimes there's just a few simple shifts that we can do that will make a huge difference. And oftentimes we think that it's just adding more. We think it's doing more things. It's more of like what this person's doing and that person's doing. And honestly, I have a YouTube channel because I love to teach and I love to help. And I love our photo community. And so many people helped me when I was first starting out in business. This is my way of paying it forward and doing like something that I love to do, which is hang out with you guys and share. Uh, but, um, where was I going with that? I had a reason, <laughs> uh, everything in our business. Um, we can like feel like we're doing all the things, but honestly, like a lot of times it's just about more about narrowing down. It's about doing less and doing less in a different way. Um, so it's not necessarily about like doing more, which, okay, that's what I was getting at. Um, I have a YouTube channel, obviously, but sometimes just watching all the YouTube videos, collecting all the tips, collecting all the strategies and, and learning from like a ton of different sources can do more harm than good because we start to feel stretched thin and we're like, okay, well I need to do this. And this person says I need to do that. And that I also need to do this. And so we start juggling all these different balls and not doing any one of them really well. Uh, and one of the things that like I teach, um, so inside Ignite, I actually have a three part approach to marketing and I actually tell students like, do one of these, <laughs> do one of these at a time. Uh, there's different marketing strategies that are better for faster growth early on. There's different marketing things that are better for like kind of long term, like over time. So for instance, SEO and blogging, uh, and you can also do SEO with social media, which is great because you can get it with your Instagram content now too. Uh, 
tends to be something that is great for kind of a longer term strategy, search strategy where people are seeking out a solution. But for quicker connections, it's often more of like the social media that might help you get that little bit of faster growth. So there's different things at different stages of business, but if you're focusing on all of them at once, you're trying to do social media and you're trying to learn Instagram and you're trying to do Pinterest and do all the things all at once, chances are you're not doing it very well and you're not connecting in the way that you need to connect to really land those dream clients. So I usually recommend narrowing down your focus and really honing in on that person. What do they need to hear? Where are they hanging out? And how can you really connect with them in a way that builds trust, builds connection, and helps them see that you are the best solution for them? Uh, At the end of the day, it all comes down to connection and relationships and communication. And if you can do that better, connect better, you don't necessarily even have to be the best photographer. Oftentimes in business, like that's not what it's about. Yes, you need great work. Yes, you need to know how to curate your portfolio in a way that aligns with your dream client, that has them see it and be like, ooh, I want that. But keep in mind, there's a lot of other photographers and they're going to see great work a lot of different places. What's gonna set you apart is how you talk to them, is how you connect to them, is how you build that brand experience that they just like something about you makes them be like, okay, you know what? This person right here is somebody that's going to bring out the best of me. It's somebody that I'm going to feel comfortable with on my photo shoot, which is so important to clients, right? We all have like our things that we get into our heads about. So if you really start to like understand the psychology of dream clients and think about what your client really needs and what they're struggling with when it comes to their photography, you know, they have their worries about I'm, I'm not going to look good on camera. I'm not photogenic, a lot of them. And you need to know this for your client, what they're struggling with, what they're thinking through in their head uh, for the kind of photography that you do and for that dream client that you're serving. But the better you know them and the better you know like what they're struggling with, the stage of life they're in, uh, what they're celebrating and what their values are, the better that you can speak to them in a way that really connects both through your branding and your marketing on the front end so that when they get to the sale, uh, you already have that relationship started. Uh, And that is like a huge key in the marketing and sales uh, so that when you get to more of the sales part of it, uh, you already have that relationship started. And then in like the sales conversation itself, I can share a piece of advice on (laughs) around pitching, uh, Megan shared, I suck at pitching and I don't want to come off as salesy. And hey, I can relate to that. I used to dread sales conversations. I would avoid them. Uh, With weddings, consultations is like one of the best things that you can do. Uh, I would get like the nervous sweats before a consultation. Like I would be like sweating and be like, oh no, I'm gonna sweat through my shirt and they're gonna see. (laughs) And uh, it's gonna be really embarrassing. So like I had to like crank up the AC and like cool myself down before consultations. I used to hate sales. But as I shifted my approach to it and started thinking about it differently and thinking about it more from the perspective of the client and how are they coming in and like thinking about how can I make this a really special experience for them where they feel celebrated, where I'm able to help them in the sales call. Like for instance, for as like an example, I have a whole consultation process. I actually share with my students called consultations that connect and convert, which is like a three hour uh, masterclass on consultation. So I can't like share everything here about my consultation process, but I can share a few tidbits. Uh, One of the things like when it comes to like serving people in our sales calls is I notice a lot of photographers like are very tight lipped when it comes to some of their processes, such as uh, your timeline, like putting together a timeline with people or Uh, talking locations or different things that might be a part of your process behind the scenes and how you serve people. And I'm not saying like, give it all away, but in, in a sense, like be very giving, like give, give, give without any 
expectation of anything in return. And that, you know, creates this feeling of reciprocity. And reciprocity is an, a, a law of the universe where when we give, people naturally feel compelled to give back. And there's like this energetic balance that is created. Also, it just feels good to give. You won't feel like you're salesy. You won't feel slimy when you're giving and helping people. Uh, so give freely in your consultations, in your sales calls, like come with the approach to just help, the approach to just serve. And with the energy of, you know, whether they go with me or not, they're going to come away feeling good, feeling celebrated and feeling helped. Uh, and that's really going to shift so much, even if you just did that one small thing in your sales calls. Uh, the other thing when it comes to pitching yourself and pitching yourself is to understand that if you've done things right in your upfront experience with your brand, people are coming in already excited to talk to you and wanting what you have to offer. So know that like they already want it. It's just really about connection, about relationship, about sharing the details with them so that they can make an informed decision. Uh, and one of the things that I find is really helpful is to begin thinking of your offer a little bit differently. So your offer, what do I mean by offer, is what you're presenting to the client. So this is like, like it's not just your pricing. Uh, it's a combination of the pricing, the experience you deliver, any products you provide. There's a lot of different things that make up that full offer that you're presenting to the client uh, beyond just price. And so if you can kind of craft this in a way that you can get really excited about it and that the price, the value far outweighs the price, then as you're sharing what you have to offer, what your experience is, and also the details of the pricing and the different options that they have, you're gonna present it with a totally different energy. It's the energy of like, wow, like this is such a gift I'm providing people. And when you can start to think of your offer like a gift, it shifts the game. Because you're saying, hey, I have this amazing gift for you. Take it or leave it. And if they say, you know, after all that, like, hey, it's not for me, then they're probably not the right fit, right? So it's just about getting those right fit clients. And um, when we can fall in love with what we had to offer and craft it in a way that there's so much value there and we just know it, that's gonna create such a magnetism and such a confidence in your selling that the people are gonna to wanna to work with you. So that's a huge part of shifting the sales experience. Uh, just kind of like nitty gritty, Focus more on serving than on selling, than on convincing, than on like trying to prove your worth. It's, it's definitely more from the place of service. And then secondly, craft an offer that you fall in love with first. And that way you can share it with excitement and ease so that your clients fall in love with it. Uh, so I hope that that helps and serves you guys. Uh, great question from Megan. Uh, any other questions around sales? Uh, let me know in the chat if that brought anything else up. Uh, and I do have uh, a handful more questions we will dig into here. Some of these were submitted right before the call, so I haven't read them yet. Uh, but let's see. Is Kev still in the house? I saw Kevin in the chat. Uh, this next one is from Kevin, one of our light ninjas. Uh, Kevin shared, it's never too late to start the business, but I've seriously just been dragging my feet with jumping full on into the business. It's kind of hard because I feel like my family relies on me to keep a steady paycheck. I wish I would have found my love for photography before I got married. I feel like I can't let go of this nine to five because of this pet steady paycheck, the benefits, the insurance, the 401k and everything else that keeps me trapped. I know my family has pushed me forward to pursue this. I just don't wanna let them down. I guess it's not really a question, but more advice on the steps to just 
let go then go. <laughs> this is actually a really great question, Kevin. And I think it's, you know, something a lot of people experience and it's a very real thing to have responsibilities and people that rely on us. And we have to, when we're talking about starting a business, when we're, when we're talking about switching any sort of careers, uh, think about the people that rely on us and, and make smart decisions. So I, I think that this is actually a really good question. Um, some of the advice I would give around this is, you know, and it's going to be very situational, uh, person to person, is you can definitely build the business on the side, right? But there is a there is a certain point where there is a line in the sand that's drawn, uh, and I know you've been in business for for a while now. Uh, there is there is a certain point where you have a foot in one world, you have a foot in the other, and there's like when do I draw the line in the sand and be like, okay, I'm going, I'm jumping in, both feet, <laughs> all the way, uh, and taking that really risky next step and. When we have responsibilities and family and other things, I think that it's important to do things in a way that respects that, uh, but also respects what you're creating in your business. So a good approach to this is to set your own rules again. So really like sit down and look at, well, what would it take uh, to jump in all the way full time, 100%. And, and usually there's this in-between that happens where you're just building it on the side for a while. And maybe it's like, hey, when I hit this amount of income in the photography business, then I can go full time. Or it might be a combination of like, okay, this amount of savings in the bank just to have like a buffer plus bringing in this amount of income in the business. Keeping in mind that it's gonna be a little bit different than when you're going full time, right? It might also be having the systems in place so that I know I can grow and scale this thing, right? That you can feel confident that, okay, like this is a machine and the only thing that's holding this machine back from growing and taking off is me being able to really dedicate my time and focus and energy into it to really scale it. Uh, so you're gonna to need to define that for yourself like, what will it take for me to say, <clears throat> okay, I'm making the switch. The problem is like a lot of people never define that for themselves. So they never have something to work towards. So if you can get clear on what that is for you, and I can't define that for you because that's going to be so different for everybody. But if you can define it, that gives you a really clear goal. And maybe your goal is like, hey, by the end of this year, I want to be a full-time photographer. I want to be able to confidently let go of my other job and do this full time and have it be just as successful, if not more, in providing for my family uh, with wealth, with finances, with that security. Because photography, when done right, is very secure. A lot of times we think of like running our own business uh, and we're approaching it from the mindset on, of a, of a um, employee and not an entrepreneur. So anybody that, you know, is coming from a place of having a steady job, we have adopted em employee mindsets that have to be shed a bit as we step into the role of entrepreneur and business owner because it's a very different approach and way of operating in the world and a lot of time that employee mindset can really hold us back and keep us broke uh and even people that are full-time in photographer and in photography that still have that employee mindset a lot of times that's what's weighing them down and it's why they struggle in business in this business role uh, because it is two different kind of beasts uh but yes, so like it's really setting like this, this is my plan. Otherwise you'll forever stay in the secure thing because you're never going to jump into the thing that's uncomfortable uh, unless you have a plan to get there. Uh, let me see. Family. I mean, it's also wonderful that your family is so supportive. Uh, it's just having like a good plan in place for that. And that that's where I was going with, with that is like, 
photography actually can be very secure. It can be very predictable, very secure. That's how my business has been for the last decade and a half. It's been very, very predictable, even through different ups and downs with the market, different economies. And uh, I think that a lot of times it's scary because it seems less predictable and it seems less secure, but once you've built it into a system, it's actually very predictable, very secure, and very, very profitable. Uh, it's just a different way of operating. And honestly, if you think about it, even these jobs that we think are secure and predictable oftentimes aren't. You know, we see that during down economies where there's these massive amounts of layoffs and you know, people that have been in these positions for a long time have grown through it, all of a sudden find themselves without a job. So anything in the world could be unpredictable. It's just about deciding like, what do we want for ourselves? What do we want for our life? Like, what's the life that you want to live? What's going to bring joy and fulfillment to you? And then going after that, making a plan and uh, going and moving forward towards those big goals. So that's why, that's where I would start. Set the vision, get really clear on the vision of what you're creating, why, how it actually helps your family, what it actually gives to you and your family in terms of more life, more joy, more fulfillment. Maybe you'll show up differently because of that joy you have within your business. Maybe it's gonna give you a lot more freedom to take your kids on trips, uh, financial freedom, time freedom. There's so much that that business will give you in terms of more life. So it's really getting clear on what is the vision of what you're creating? What's the why behind it that is going to be that guiding North Star that just pulls you forward towards it because the clearer you can get on that vision and why it's essential and why you're freaking doing it, the better. And then have the plan, the action steps to guide you closer to that vision. and. Um, and have a, a, a timeline, have a deadline that you're going to do it by. And so that's that's my advice on that. So hope that helps, Kevin. Really good question. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to see you go full time. Uh, you'll have to keep me updated. Mm -mm. All right. So I think there was some questions from, oh, it's 11 o'clock. Uh, so we will hop off here soon, but... I want to take a few more questions from the broadcast channel. So this is um, my new broadcast channel over on Instagram. If you want to come hang out, say hey. Uh, Kelsey asked, how do you find where your dream client is looking for a photographer? This is a great question. Uh, so when it comes to our marketing and our approach to marketing and getting visible by dream clients, which is the goal, uh, because we really don't want to be taking an everything approach to visibility. You can, but you're going to get varying results. That's why a lot of times we, we get ghosted, right? It's, um, it's more about getting really clear on like who that, that one person is you're serving first honing in on your niche and then honing in on like, who's that person and like really getting to know them. And, and Kelsey's actually been through, uh, ignite and has done all of the dream client homework. Uh, but then at a certain point, we have the knowledge, we have the information, we have an idea of where these people are hanging out. Uh, it's gonna like come down to testing a little bit. Uh, so first, getting clear on that person, really getting to know them, getting to know what they value, where they hang out, where they pull advice from. A lot of times, when we start getting into more premium clients, they're really looking for a trusted source. So premium clients, and even early on, uh, even at the beginning stage of business, like what I've discovered is a lot of times, like the best is going to be referral. That's gonna be creme de la creme, uh, because that's where the most trust is going to come from as far as visibility in our marketing strategy. So I do like to take a multiple part approach in how we reach people and get in front of people because I think that's a very smart approach to things. First is going to be like our word of mouth and then it's going to be, and that's more of like our trust based marketing. And then it's going to be our social media marketing. And I find that Instagram is one of the best places for this, but you need to know your person. If your person's not hanging out on Instagram, maybe they're hanging out on TikTok 
or maybe they're more on LinkedIn or Facebook. That's really important to know because then you can meet them where they're at uh, with your marketing strategy. And it's really then going to come down after you know them really well to testing and seeing like, where are my leads coming from? Like of those right dream clients. And, and it's also tracking. So I actually track this with every single one of the people that come in. It's part of my contact form. Like, how did you find me? Or actually, I don't, don't have it on my contact form anymore. I actually have it as the first thing that I send them after they reply. Uh, and um, yeah, just have some sort of way of tracking where people are coming from, how they're finding you and uh start paying attention to that and documenting like what's actually working because if you notice like hey 80 percent of my people are coming through instagram or actually like 40 percent of my leads are coming through this online feature i got on style me pretty or this magazine or this blog you know where to double down then like okay hey that's a clue just begin testing and then collecting clues as to where your dream people are actually hanging out. And then that helps us inform where to double down in our marketing strategy. Okay, like I really need to focus on style shoots and uh, really leveling up my work so that I can get more features, right? Or, you know, I've noticed that these relationships give me the best dream clients. So how can I really cultivate and celebrate those relationships and pour more of my marketing dollars into cultivating deeper connections with those people, whether that be your past clients uh, or through other vendors or creative partners that you can partner with that have a mutual ideal client. You're really looking for people that align with you in your business when it comes to word of mouth. Uh, so there are some ideas around uh, how to connect with those right clients. Uh, it is a little bit of like, it depends, right? Because everybody's dream client is going to be different. Uh, but there are tried and true ways of getting in front of those people. And then it's really just paying attention to the data and what it's telling us. So I hope that helps guys. Um, let me see. Let's take one more in the chat. Um, Hmm. This question comes from Carolyn. What do you do with potential clients not 100% sure of finalizing the booking? It's a good question. So this comes down to sales strategy and everybody is going to have a little bit of a different approach to it. I shared a bit that, you know, my approach to sales is really approaching it from a place of service and from a place of being a friend. But at the same time, if we don't have a deadline to something, people will often drag their feet and not move forward. So when it comes to having a sales conversation, whether it's through a consultation or some sort of other uh, sales call and the client you know, wants some time to think and is not ready to finalize the booking right on the call, there are things we can do. There are things you can actually do to help people close on the call. It's not my approach. My thought is always client first. So every part of like what I do in business is really client centered and really thinking through what would I want if I were a client. And a lot of times, you know, when you're, as my clients do, dropping 15,000 on a photographer that's not a decision you're you're necessarily making right there in the call uh, a lot a lot do a lot are ready to like book right away like same day but i like to give people the space to talk things through and to like think about it even if they are ready so what i do and kind of my approach to this is i let them know that they have a they have a 24-hour hold so you could do 24 hours, you could do 48 hours, but they have a 24 hour hold on their date from the time of the call. And I'll just let them know. So that that is yours after that it opens up because it is first come first serve, but I would love to work with them. Uh, and I get all the details for them out that same day after the call. So I'll let them know that I'm gonna get them all set up and that they can look things over. Uh, 
And, you know, I also put together a custom package for them based on that call. So I do a little bit of a hybrid approach when it comes to pricing. I have packages, uh, but then I also customize those packages to them. So I talk to them on the call about what's important to them for their photography. And then I will then customize those packages for them. So I get that all set up after a call. That way they have all of the information to just go ahead and lock things in really easily. This is why it's so important to have uh, a CRM where you can have everything organized and really easy to set up on the fly for clients. But from there, I, I don't have like a super pressure approach because that's not how I would want uh, to be treated as a client. So it really depends on, on you and how, how your clients you think would best interact. But I do think it is important to have some sort of a deadline. Otherwise people will take their time, life happens, things get busy, right? So the, the most excitement is gonna happen right during and after that call. So you do wanna create a container where a decision needs to be made. I think 24 hours is a sweet spot. It gives them time to chat things over and get that deposit in. And that tends to work really, really well. Uh, but great question from Carolyn. So awesome guys. Oh my gosh, it was so fun getting to hang out for this little coffee chat. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, so we, we talked about a lot today. We covered strategy, burnout, uh, sales. A lot of sales conversation, which is super fun because I actually love selling uh, and sales stuff. Uh, so a couple quick announcements. <clears throat> I am opening doors for Ignite for the first time since uh, last year, last July was the last time it opened up. Uh, and Ignite, my business course for photographers is opening up April 8th through the 12th for anybody that might be interested. Uh, the wait list for that is at chelsinicoletraining.com. So if having me as your mentor and doing more of these kind of chats uh, where we're able to like actually get on video together and you're able to share about your business, what you're running into and get personalized coaching around it is something that you would love. Uh, Ignite would be perfect for you. In addition to the program itself, there is eight weeks of live group coaching where we are in a Zoom chat together and you're able to ask any question. Uh, so I would love to invite you to come be a part of that if that's something that would help you in your business. ChelseaNicoleTraining.com to hop on the wait list and uh, my wait list gets extra special bonuses. So even if you're just curious, hop on there and you'll also hear about the free workshop I'm doing, Rich Photographer, Poor Photographer, how uh, what the top photographers are doing differently in business to stand out and profit wildly. Uh, so I haven't announced that yet. That'll probably be announced within the next week or so. So if you're on the email list or if you just sign up on that wait list, you'll get the notification for the live workshop. And that's totally free, uh, a fun boot camp for our photographer community where we're gonna be digging into like all the juicy stuff around what it takes to be a premium photographer and really grow as a business owner. So pumped for that. Lots of fun stuff to come. And we will do more of these uh, little business chats. So let me know. I want to know if you enjoyed this, if you would like more of these. Uh, your feedback will be helpful for me to know like if this is something that we should do more of within our community. So definitely let me know. Send any additional questions my way. You can drop them in the chat and I will save them for next time. Uh, but yeah, I think it would be fun to do more of these. I actually really enjoy hanging out and getting to, to chat. I didn't get to drink much of my coffee because I was talking too much, but <laughs> hopefully you got to drink some coffee over there. And I hope you guys have a beautiful day, a beautiful week. Keep crushing it and keep going after those biggest business dreams and goals. I'll catch you later. Bye guys.